Hey everybody, welcome back to Champ and Sons and our NCAA Baseball 22 Series, the road to the College World Series. And we have got a standard weekday series coming up against the Nebraska Cornhuskers. We are on the road and we have fallen off a little bit um, during the simulation. As you can see, we're now number four in the Big 12. And we're 14 games out of first and 10 and a half games out of the wild card. So outside of every other team losing all their games and we win everyone, I'm not sure the uh, College World Series is in our sights for this season. But we still have something to play for called Pride. And that is what we are going to be doing here uh, today. Now we are in Lincoln, Nebraska at Cornhuskers Field. Um... It's kind of funny, the baseball game doesn't have Cornhuskers as a name to be called over the audio, so they are called Hillbillies. <laughs> oh, God, I just find that funny. Uh, Nebraska is a former Big 12 opponent, another school that left for a different conference and has not found the success that they were, I guess, hoping for. Uh, but hopefully, maybe they found the money. Now, in this game, to start out, game number one of the series, Fernando Benitez will be taking the mound against our uh, Longhorn offense. And like I said, we have fallen off a little bit. So, you know, Bill Hamill, who's now a 246 hitter for a while, was batting 270. So, um, but right now, he's struggling a little bit at the plate, which is pretty consistent amongst all of our batters for the most part. Now, that first pitch does get fouled off, and their guy... Uh, Benitez has got a lot of speed. His pitches, his fastball, um, getting close to the 100-mile-an-hour mark as Hamill hits a soft little liner right there. This cut fastball just outside of the zone. We got enough of it to pick it up and put it in the air. And so we are going to have to deal with that, and that's going to be something that's going to be pretty tough to handle. Now, Martin Cruz and Cristobal Ramirez will round out the top three. Cochran comes in at four, followed by Falk, Doyle, Villegas, Gonzalez, and uh, Perez there. So, pretty good batting lineup. Normally, uh, most of our guys are now, we had a few over 300. Now, Cochran is the only 300 batter that we've got. So, we're, we're going to have to work on that in the offseason and see, you know, who did, we who, could, who did we recruit? What are our youngsters look like coming in? And everything in there. So, it, it, we got work to do, but that work starts right now at this stage, okay? Everything is a tryout for starting spot. Next season, we may have a completely different overhaul look um, as far as who's on the field and who's at the plate. And Cruz is normally one of our more consistent hitters. He does fight off that pitch and foul it off and have a one and two count. Where Benitez now comes home with that pitch and Cruz is gonna hit a liner over to right field that does squeeze past the second baseman. And he will reach onto first base, the first hit of the game. Comes here by the Longhorns and Martin Cruz, our third baseman, driving it out to right field. So now Cristobal Ramirez, our shortstop, batting 264 on the season, will come to the plate and they get a pitch out there. Look at that, coming at 101 miles per hour on a pitch out. I'm not sure, you know, even without the slide step, if this guy throws a fastball, a steal may be negated just by the speed of this pitch. And Ramirez is going to hit that one up, another little blooper to second base. The second you know, line out basically, a little soft line drive hit to their second baseman. First one is Hamill, then Ramirez right there. So that gives two quick outs as Cochran comes and he's swinging at the first pitch and driving it deep to left field. And the left fielder will chase that one down. And that is going to be the end of the top half of the first inning. The Longhorns do get a man on base with Martin Cruz driving in um, the ball in the right field, getting the single. Now on the bump for the Horns, it is going to be Gomez there, or Gomes. Guillermo Gomes coming to the plate. He's not doesn't have the best record. His ERA is pretty decent. The strikeout to walk ratio is does leave something to be desired. Um, and uh, you know our pitching it hasn't gotten the greatest offense support. So you know everything is kind of exaggerated when you start looking at it when your team is struggling in that sense. We will have to definitely turn that around uh, in the next season. But Gomes comes out firing in this one, striking out the first batter. He's not known for getting all that many strikeouts in total. But he does get that man to go down swinging on a pretty good pitch down and away. Not quite out of the zone, but just on the edge. And it was actually out of the zone according to the look of it. 
But hey, he's chased it, so it doesn't matter. And that will bring up Alexi Cortez batting 278 for the Cornhuskers. Swings and a miss at that first pitch. A splitter down low. That little falling off action seems to be fooling him up. Alexi Cortez does have 52 runs and is batting 278 on this season. Nebraska is also just like us, sitting at fourth in their conference as well. Not going to be playoff bound this season. Uh, but hey, it's still a matchup. It's still playing for pride. You, you know, you still got something to build on um, going into next season. And Gomes is going to deliver that next pitch outside for a ball. The count is now two and two here as he delivers the pitch to Cortez. And that's going to be called for a strikeout looking at change up down low in the zone. Still called a strike. It looks like this umpire may have a little bit wider of his own going downward um, than a lot of guys. As you can see right there, that pitch looks like it comes in just below the knee, but close enough to be called a strike. Now two outs here in the bottom of the first inning as Gomes is firing on all cylinders, getting the first two strikeouts. And that next one's going to come in as a strike against Anthony Wynn, batting 259 on the season as Gomes has him at an 0-1 count. And the pitch is a swing and a miss. It's going to be 0-2 now. Anthony Wynn has got two doubles and three RBIs in his last five games. And that next one is going to be an inside pitch, which he will drive hard foul down the left field line. And that count remains at 0-2. Now Gomes comes home with it. Dow just out of the zone. That's going to be called for a ball. So the count is now 1-2 to win. Gomes gets sets and delivers another one just inside. Everything is evened up. Cornhusker showing some patience here as the count is two and two. And that's going to be a pitch and a line drive to right field. Viega's on his horse and he'll make that catch in right field for the third out of the inning. So no harm done on either side of the lineup for the first inning. Longhorns did get one hit. The Cornhuskers held to zero. And now we are going to move on up to the top of the sixth inning where we will have the top of the lineup. The score is still 0-0 zero to zero now. Hamill, who was 0 for 2, lines that one to center, and Hamill will actually reach first base now. So he is on first. He's got speed, so we may be able to work out a steal with him. We'll kind of see how things go with this pitcher and his slide step um, and try to time it out properly. And so he gets his first hit. He's now one for three on the day. And here comes Martin Cruz to the plate. Got a, a single in the first inning. And hasn't done much since then. He is one for two at the plate. And like I said, Hamill's got the speed. So we kind of want to inch him over, but they know we're looking to steal. And we got to be a little bit more aggressive on the base path. We're in the sixth inning. The score is still tied at zero to zero. Since we have no outs, let's try to take advantage. And the pitch will come home, and that's going to be a fastball out of the zone coming in at 98 miles per hour. That is just one of those hard things to try to judge. You don't want to steal on a pitch that quick because it just gets to the catcher so much faster. Uh, so we really have to work to try to time it out if we are going to pull out the steal as they check Hamill over at first, and he is back safely and easily. So the count's still 1-0 and to Cruz. As he stands in with Hamill on first, top of the sixth inning, score tied 0-0, zero to zero, and he's going to let that pitch go by 99 miles an hour as he pitches count is now 1-1. One and one. The next one, he'll drive to third. It's going to be knocked down, so Hamill will be safe at second, and Cruz will actually be in there at first. They're going to call that one a base hit, and he did. He rocketed that one down the line right at the third baseman. But he's not able to make the play. But he does knock it down and prevent it from getting to the outfield, which probably would have sent Hamill over to third. However, right now he is in scoring position. So Ramirez comes to the plate, who's 0 for 2 on the afternoon. Now there are zero outs here in the top of the sixth inning with two men on, and Hamill is in scoring position, our speedster. First pitch was a ball. Second pitch comes out and just barely misses the outside, and that's going to be ball number two. Ramirez batting 206 with runners in scoring position. And that's been something that's kind of faltered the Longhorns. Our runner with scoring position batting average is pretty dang low. We definitely need to bring it up. We can get some hits, but we're just not getting runs. But right now, Ramirez hits a high fly ball to center field. They're tracing it down. He's going to make the catch, but Hamill will get over to third easily as he is standing. We thought about sending him home, but... That ball came in a little too quick for me to decide to send him. 
Now Darren Cochran comes to the plate batting 0 for 2 on the day as well. The only Longhorn with a 300 batting average. And this one he hits to the right side. It's going to get past second baseman. Hamill will score as they fire that one over to third and hold up. Cruz at second. So Cruz is at second. Cochran's at first. Hamill comes across the plate. And the Longhorns will take a 1-0 lead in this one here into the sixth inning. Now, Fernando Benitez, he's, his pitch count's not all that high, but when you start throwing him 100 miles an hour, your arm can kind of wear down pretty quick. So he does look like he is getting a little bit tired out there and starting to miss his spot some. Now, Falk will come to the plate, and he lets the first pitch go for a ball. Second one, he swings it, and that's going to be grounded to third. Over to second, and they fire it over to first. A double play to end the inning, but, hey, damage was done. Cochran hits a, just enough on it. I mean, it was just out of the reach of the second baseman. I don't think he would have been able to turn the double. But, hey, he gets on. The run gets home. We have a lead now. So here we are in the bottom of the sixth Lead inning. Gomes is still on the mound for the Horns. As you see, his pitch count is right there with Benitez. So we'll kind of see how he does for the rest of this inning. We don't want him to falter a little too much. And that first pitch is going to be a little blooper over to second base as it's going to get past Gonzalez, and he will find Viegas there in right field. Soft little blooper right where it needed to be to, um, to fall in. So now they have a man on first. He's got some speed, so Gomes has got to keep a watch on him as he fires that first strike in at 96 miles an hour. The 0-1 count, another fastball. This one lower in the zone, but still a strike. 0-2 is the count at this time. And he delivers that next pitch inside for a ball, a breaking ball. And good thing they didn't steal on that one. So one and two is the count as Gomes delivers it to Diaz. He's going to ground it up the middle. Gonzalez flips it to Ramirez, and he fires it over to Falk at first. Double play by this Longhorn defense. That is what we needed to see right there. That is how our this game has stayed at one to nothing. Well, really zero to zero until we were at bat there in the top of the sixth. As great defense being played, really by both sides. You got to give the Cornhuskers their credit where credit is due. You know what I'm saying? And so that's why the game is now still one to nothing here in the sixth inning. Longhorns are leading in Lincoln, Nebraska. Two outs now in the bottom of the sixth. Alexi Cortez comes to the plate, and he's going to ground that one over to Gonzalez, who uses his range and gets it to first. And that will end the sixth inning here with the Longhorn lead. So we got one run on six hits. They have zero runs on four hits. Like I said, good defense, good pitching has really held this one together. Now we still have a one nothing lead as we come into the bottom of the ninth inning with the top of the lineup started with Jamie Diaz. He's going to line that one past the shortstop, and Perez will gather it up there in left field and fire it over to second. Now Andre Hammond is going to be in to try to close this one out. He's our most consistent closing pitcher um, that we do have on the roster. So now the count being 1-0, oh, oh, he fires it to second on the bunt. Ramirez is not able to turn two, but guess what? We got the lead runner. They tried to do a sacrifice. He got a little too much on it. Perfect pitch, a fastball up, up in the zone. And it gets right back there to Hammond. He fires it to second to get that lead runner. So the Huskers still have a man on, but he's not in scoring position right now. And now Anthony Wynn comes into the plate as he has grounded into 13 double plays over the season. As we try to make it four, and Cochran tries to get the steal. They steal second. Cochran just lets it slip out of his hand. It's like there's extra grease on that ball or something. So now they have a man in scoring position. And they're going to hit a little blooper to shortstop. Ramirez comes up underneath it, and that's going to be two outs here in the bottom of the ninth inning. So the Cornhuskers are down to their last out in this opening game of the series. As Rob Asensio comes to the plate, 0 for 3 on the day. Trying to make him 0 for 4. The first pitch comes in as a fastball low in the zone. Asensio batting only 200 runners in scoring position. Once again, we're both in number 4 in our conference, and I think we're kind of starting to see why a little bit. And the next pitch is going to be a strike in the zone, a little bit low and inside, but 0 and 2 is the count now. Nebraska down to their final strike here with a man in scoring position. Hammond delivers. It's going to be a grounder right up the middle. Ramirez gathers it in. Fires it over to Falk. He's going to be out at first. Game one is ours. What a play on the field by Ramirez. Gonzalez and Ramirez up the middle really helped shut this game down for us. 
and provide us with this win once we got that lead. Got to love seeing those guys pull, come together to pull that one out here. As we get a one game to nothing lead in this three game set that we have here in Lincoln, Nebraska as our season gets ready to come to a close. And that was a tough fought game. You know, we, we did hold true to it. We didn't falter. We kept to our game plan. Um, and we won. We got out of it at the beginning swinging at some bad pitches or swinging a little too early. But we, we kept through and pulled out that win. Now here we are in game two in the top of the 10th inning. This game is tied 4-4. Four to four. Ramirez is at the plate. And guess what? That would mean that Martin Cruz is there at second. So Cristobal Ramirez batting 202 with runner in scoring position, trying to give us the lead in this one, although he is 0 for 3 on this Tuesday night. And he's going to be 1 for 4 now as he drives that one to right field, but it's not going to be far enough to get Cruz to be scored. So now we have runners at first and third. So the double play is still open for us, but hey, if they could turn a double play, as long as we get one run in, that's all I truly do care about. And so now Jim Doyle, who's one for four in the evening, comes to the plate to face off against Giancarlo Medrano, the pitcher for the Cornhuskers. And that first one comes in at 98 miles an hour. These Cornhusker pitchers are able to put a lot of speed on that ball, and he placed that one just perfectly. As we take a look at the Cornhusker bullpen, they got a couple guys warming up for just in case. And now the 0-1 pitch to Doyle is going to be right over the plate. He drives it to left field. That means Cruz is going to score. The Longhorns will take the lead. Oh, my goodness. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. Giancarlo Medrano gives up the game-leading run there on that hit to Jim Doyle, who pulled it just to the left just enough to get between the third baseman and the shortstop. And Cruz comes home, so we now lead 5-4. to four. And with that, we're going to go check out our bullpen and see if we can't get a closer uh, the closing tight pitcher pulled up, and I'm going to get Ryan Kidd warming up. He doesn't have the best record, but I truly believe that you know he can pull this one out um, if we need him to. So now the one-run lead. Kenny Falk comes to the plate, swings and misses at that first fastball just out of the zone. And so his count is 0-1 as the Longhorns do have two guys at first and second. And that next pitch is going to be another fastball right over the heart of the plate. Probably should have swung at that one. Falk batting 305 with runners in scoring position, trying to drive in another RBI. That next pitch is going to be fouled off a of fastball down low and away. A lot of fastballs is what Falk is seeing right now. 0-2 is the count. Medrano gets set, and he delivers the pitch outside for a ball. Coming in a slider, coming in at 90 miles per hour. Talk about some heat right there. So the 1-2 pitch, Medrano comes home with it. And Falk is going to deliver that one to the outfield. Here comes around the plate, Ramirez. He's coming home with it, and he's going to be in. That's going to be a 6-4 lead. What a hit by Falk. Clutch hitting as he drove that one into right center field. Gathered up, allowing our, the run to score. And we have just now extended this lead by two runs here in the top of the 10th inning. Got to have some clutch hitting happen for us. And on that note, Nebraska will bring in Clifford McCallum here to try to finish this one out to get out of this inning as there are zero outs here in the top of the 10th, but two runs across. And on the very next batter, Viegas lines that one to center field once again. And they're going to send the runner home. Doyle, he's on his horse. The relay comes in. He slides in safely. Doyle gets in just ahead of the tag as they now lead by three runs here. The aggressiveness is not stopping here in game two of this series as he pushes that one beautifully hit right where right over the second baseman into the outfield and that gave Doyle the, the speed burst I guess he needed to get through. So now here comes Henry Cortez filling in at left field now for Perez. He's one for four on the day and he's got two guys on and no outs here in this one. So Cortez 0-1 is a count to him as he swings and he's going to dribble her up to first base and they're going to turn two on that one as they will, and Cortez will ground into a double play. He hasn't seen a whole lot of playing time this season and kind of reasons like you just saw right there, but we might want to keep looking at him as we go into the preseason of next year. 
Now Mark Gonzalez, our sturdy second baseman, comes to the plate at 0 for 3 on the day right now to face off against a lefty McCallum. Gonzalez is batting a 3-11 with runners in scoring position, so he's not the ideal guy you want to face with someone 90 feet away from home. And there's why as he drives that one right up the field. The run is going to score. Gonzalez is going to get on first. That is a big-time run by this team, putting it, I wouldn't say completely out of range, but, hey, when you are a grand slam ahead, yeah, I, I think you should feel pretty safe about how your team is performing in that game and the, your chances of victory. They will check on Gonzalez because he does have some speed, but not much. And with two outs, he's not much of a threat to run. Now, Jim Reed will come to the plate, and he hits a high drive ball to right field. They've gotten under that one, and it's going to be an easy out for him there in right field. And so four runs are put up on the board as Longhorns lead 8-4. Eight, eight runs on 12 hits to four runs on seven hits for the Cornhuskers. As we come to the bottom of the 10th, do or die for the Cornhuskers as Ryan Kidd will come into the game as he has his record of 2-2. Two and two. But this is more of a just close it out non-save situation. Um, I, I really want to get him going. One of the last times we had him in a game, he kind of got lit up pretty good. So we've got some space to play with. And that second pitch to Anthony Wynn is going to be down out of the zone. And the count is 1-1. One and one. Wynn is 0 for 4 on the day and struggling at the plate. And he hits a high fly ball to left field. Cortez will gather under it. And he fires that one in because if y'all remember, I do play that extra inning run, extra inning rule where they have the guy on second. Me personally, I like it. So be it if you don't. That's just kind of the way it goes. That's baseball for you. And the next batter swings at their first pitch as well. Cortez gathers that one in and fires a wild one in to Ramirez there at shortstop. Another reason why Cortez may not have the most playing time on our team. And that will bring up Ramon Aguero there, 0 for 4, batting cleanup for the Cornhuskers as he lets that first pitch go by down low in the zone for a strike. 0 and 1 is a count. Kid delivers the next one. He grounds it over to Cruz, who instead of making the tag, fires it over to first. And that's because really I didn't expect that guy to run. Um, so we do fire to first. We get the third out. That is your ball game, ladies and gentlemen. We have taken two in a row here from Nebraska. You gotta love seeing that happen. Um, this team, you know, we've had our moments and our slip ups. So to win two in a row, it's kind of a big thing for us. Um, we, we've got we've become accustomed more right now to losing two in a row. But hey, now we've gotten two in a row here in Lincoln on the road, and two hard fought games, one nothing in the other game, eight to four in this one because of a four run tenth inning. As we pulled it out here. And that, that's something, like I said, we can build on that. As we finish out this season and get ready for the next season, we can definitely build on that. So we'll kind of see how things go from there. Now, Howard Tucker will get the win. Giancarlo Madrano will get the loss for the Cornhuskers. And so we do end up simulating the third game. It does give us a win, 6-3, to three, and we do sweep. And so we will get set up for the final push here at the end of the season in the next episode. Now, with that in mind, I do want to remind you all to hit the subscribe button if you have not hit it already. And if you like college baseball, you're excited about the regionals and the College World Series coming up, give us a thumbs up as it really does help out the channel. And we greatly appreciate everything y'all do for us here at Champ and Sons. And so I will see y'all in the next one, everybody. So as always, stay safe. And well, y'all know how it goes by now, right? Later, y'all.